Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna do a video today where our, our system, you guys saw this, we did the case review for the new Define S2 Vision. This is a clean Windows install. And it is completely borked in that, like nothing is working. Like see the little thinking wheel and stuff? You'll never guess what's actually causing this. Oh look, end process. Microsoft Windows is not responding. <laughs> <laughs> no, the problem isn't Windows. Today's video is sponsored by Cable Mod and their massive clearance sale taking place right now at Performance PCs. Whether you're looking for sleeved cable sets for power supplies, AIO sleeve kits, cable extensions, or LED lights, you can start spicing up your PC at massive discounts. To see what's on sale now, click the link to the sale page in the description below. See if we can't get it to go. Like I said, this is a, I don't wanna give away what the problem is yet. I mean, I'm sorry for the clickbaity title, I really am, but this is important. I want you guys to watch this because in my seven years of doing this YouTube channel, and well, I would say 30 years of building computers, um, but I haven't, uh, haven't been dealing with these components for 30 years, obviously. As you can see, we can't get anything to come up. Nothing's working. And I'm telling you right now, what is causing this is something that um, is probably gonna make a lot of you happy. Watch what's gonna happen right here. It's gonna start to load Windows, or try. See how we're not getting a little thinking wheel? This is where a lot of people would probably go down the wrong rabbit hole in thinking what the problem is. I, I guarantee someone at this point would bust out their Windows installer and be like, oh man, I got a corrupt Windows install. I need to reinstall Windows. And they would try and reinstall Windows and it would fail. Because in this particular instance, what's causing our system to completely brick itself and shit itself at the same time is RGB. For, for the first time, you have a legitimate right to say, fuck RGB. Because in this case, RGB is fucking us. That little HyperX drive right there with that Tony Stark level of arc reactor brightness. The, ow, holy sh, that's hotter I think than we've ever seen it. All right, where is the, <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. So, okay, the LEDs that are in this drive literally draw enough power. There are 75 LEDs in here, more LEDs than the rest of the system combined that are causing our drive to reach over 70 degrees Celsius. This is a SATA drive. We are getting hotter than M.2 drives get. And if you're not familiar with NAND, it has an operating temperature and it's fairly sensitive. As it overheats and gets hotter, it slows down to the point to where the only way it can keep itself from cooking itself to death is literally throttle itself and slow itself, itself down. Look, we are still sitting here. It is still trying to get Windows to load because it's probably getting a megabyte a second. It is cooking itself to death right now trying to start Windows. So I'm gonna turn on my FLIR here. If I go ahead and point this at it, it has to adjust, 64. 64 on the exterior? 64 on the exterior, yeah. Our drive is hotter than the VRMs. Yeah, but you, you're pointing at the light. Yes, I know, but that light is also what's generating the heat that's making its way into the drive. What I'm gonna do right now, in real time, and hopefully it'll come back, is I'm gonna take this fan and I'm gonna point it. This massive ass fan. We're gonna point it right at the drive and see if the system will wake back up without a reboot. So we first learned about this when we were shooting the B-roll for this build. We, uh, we couldn't get into the operating system and I'm going, what the heck, man? But that's when we started looking over the internet and we found this Anantech or Anantech article where they talked about bright light, dim performance or something like that's the name of the article. And then, uh, so this, it's definitely worth reading. I will try to remember to put the article down below, but if you, um, if you just search the internet for Anantech, and Kingston HyperX Fury drive, LED drive, or L RGB, this is what you'll find. There's only one other drive on the market that's even anywhere similar to this, and I believe that that is the team group, has like a RGB SSD. So it's not really a thing yet. So this has been sitting on the back of the chassis um, with the glass on it and stuff, and we've been running tests before starting this video. It doesn't matter if the glass is on, the glass is off, uh, it's the same. Just turning on the LEDs heat up the drive. In fact, I did a test with the LEDs off with running Crystal Mark and nine sequential or nine runs of sequential and random read write back to back to back. So for like 27, 27 read write tests back to back, um, the temperatures are flat. They don't move. In fact, we have an image right here we can show you of that. But what we also did was simply let the system sit at idle. And no, it's not coming back. It's completely failed. But if I go ahead and restart this, 
because we've cooled the drive down, we will get into Windows where we can start showing you in real time kind of what's happening here. But I want you to look at this little, this little time lapse as I'm kind of talking here. If you watch this, this sort of a time lapse here over about, I don't know, like an eight minute duration, all we did was let it sit at the desktop and turn on the LEDs. And we filmed it both with the camera pointing at the chart, which is an MSI afterburner using hardware monitor for, um, or grabbing the smart info off the drive. And then we uh, used the thermal camera to kind of see what was happening to the casing of the drive with that chart so we could see interior and exterior temperatures. And right, as, right around the time we get to about 60, high 50s, low 60s, we start seeing de degraded performance. Once we hit like 63, 65, you get what we have here, which is a completely dead system simply because of the LEDs. And again, it's important to note that was idle. The system was doing nothing. That drive is hotter than our studio lights. We have the thermal image to prove it. So what we have to do right now to get it back is let that fan cool that hard drive down to normal temperatures, restart it. It'll probably go into startup repair. Then we'll get to the desktop and we'll show you how bad it really is. So once we get into the operating system, if it tries to do the updates right now, we're screwed. I'm about to go in and unplug the actual RGB I'm header. You, tape the AIO too. <laughs> oh no, no, updates. <laughs> well, with the fan pointing at it, we might be okay. Cause that's one of the other things we're gonna test is like, I, can I know someone has already typed this. And if it's you, watch the damn video before you comment. <laughs> Yes, we're gonna test what happens with airflow over the drive, a realistic amount of airflow. No, we're not gonna relocate it to inside the chassis because I don't have enough slack on those cables with the way it's wired up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it flat like it would be on the, the floor of the motherboard, or the, the case, uh, like divider wall, and then we're gonna have a regular case fan just sort of gently blow air over it and see if that's enough to keep it in, there go the updates, to see if that's enough to keep it in check in terms of temperatures. The drive normally draws like one watt. Like SSDs don't pull any power which is kind of ironic that they've got, you know, the SATA power cables and everything going to it. But with the, with the LEDs on in white, so we set it to white for RGB, for all three of the RGB LEDs to be lit, which I know you're thinking about, the RGB, it's a white LED? Yes, I remember that outtake film. <laughs> the thing is, if we ran a single LED before we tested it with blue, it took a lot longer to get to this point, but with white, it was ridiculously fast how fast it overheated. And I thought, okay, well fine, I'll just unplug the RGB harness from it. That'll get us by. When you unplug the RGB harness, it just defaults to red and it still overheats. I'm also legitimately curious as to why they felt 75 LEDs was necessary. Your, your drive has obviously got all of your data on it. And if it's like doing crazy stuff because of temperatures, it could corrupt your data. There's no doubt about it. Diagnosing your PC. <laughs> Turn RGB, RGB off. <laughs> the drive is sitting at 47 with that fan blowing at it. So if I turn it off, watch what happens. So it's only at 47. We just turned off the fan, look at that, 48. The whole system is already like- Are you already starting Yeah, it? look at that. It's already, see how it's already getting crazy? This was our test when we had that, that time-lapse going. This is that chart. And then this is when we turned off the LED. So what I need to do right now, cause look, it's already at 52 and we're gonna start slowing down here. Is I gotta, I gotta open up Dragon Center. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Now it's a white square. <laughs> oh no, Microsoft Windows is not. Oh, what happened? I need to turn the fan back on, yeah. You see how we turned on the, dry, the fan though? You see how it started all coming back? It's completely temperature uh, dependent. Now if we go here to Mystic Light, whenever... <laughs> <laughs> this drive can do it. If I turn the LEDs off, watch how quickly the system comes back to us. So it's at 53. There, oh <laughs> jeez. So... 11 degrees. All we turned off was the lighting. So close that. Oh, yeah, everything's like catching up now from all the clicks I did earlier. Look, we got that running. We got Edge is running. This is running. File Explorer. Everything's running. The drive is extremely temperature dependent. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and mimic as if this drive were sitting like in that, that center part of the chassis there. And then we're gonna just point a case fan at it. In fact, we are gonna point even the same case fan and we are gonna see what happens with an actual fan. So this is running because it's hooked up to the same controller, the exact same speed as the front fans. So we've sort of made kind of our own chassis back here with the drive in it to see how that does. So we're sitting here at 30, it's still slightly cooling off. So all I'm gonna do now is turn the LEDs back on let the temp go to where it's gonna go. We'll see where it maxes with a theoretical airflow if we were to put it in the 
center divider wall of this chassis in the direct airflow. All right, so as you can see, the system's already unresponsive. This, this, oh, there it goes. This accounts for what? If we go and look over here, you can see we indeed have airflow in my little theoretical chassis right here. The, the drive is still overheating to the point to where the system is already sluggish, 57 degrees while sitting here in the desktop doing nothing with airflow over it is certainly not acceptable. Maybe I will. <laughs> You're really good. Maybe I will. I don't think this is gonna work. We had to make a plate to sort of touch this to like make like a heat spreader. I had no intentions of this turning into an idiot's crazy cooling video. All of our stupid idea videos that we do totally prepared us for this, man. So I just put two fans in here. I'm like, there's, I, I don't think this is gonna work. It's a heat pad from the drive to this like metal plate I'm using to try and heat, work as a heat spreader to thermal paste on the pump. And that's actually secured really tight. The irony is you can't see the RGB anymore on the drive, but we have RGB fans. So the drive was at, is at 24 right now. That's already like six to seven lower than it was idling. All right, lights are on. Okay, now we wait. <laughs> now we wait. This was the original curve, how it just kind of kept going. This is our curve now. It's starting to flatten off. But the problem is it's starting to flat plateau with that water cooler where it's still hot enough to be causing slowdown like you just saw where I was trying to open that file. So that, uh, I was hoping it was gonna work, but we knew it wasn't going to because it's like the SSD NAND themselves plus the thermal pad to a metal plate to the chassis to another thermal pad, to a metal plate, to thermal paste, to pump. So. To water, to rad, to air. To water, to rad, to air. I mean, it just hit 58. All right, so here's the bottom line. Under no circumstances should you buy this SSD. The Fury RGB LED is furiously hot, unnecessarily, even if you put it in direct airflow as we showed earlier. So, I just felt like I need to make this video as a public service announcement to save your money by any other SSD. Probably not even the team group RGB one, although it may not have the same problem because them cramming 75 LEDs in this tiny little two and a half inch drive space is stupid. So this is the first product I've come along that literally warranted me making a video to say, this is so bad, you should stay away from it like it were the PC plague. Because as you can see, it definitely gives the PC the plague. Oh, I need to boy, turn if off. If you want us to LN2 cool this. this no, I'm not LN2 <laughs> cooling this drive. I've already given you guys my final thoughts. There's nothing else to say. This uh, this drive is in the end game now. That's pretty bad.